Hello, let's do some math for fun. Here is the equation for you guys. We are going to solve x plus y plus z is equal to 1, x times y times z is equal to 1, and notice that their absolute values are all equal to 1. Lastly, x, y, z, they belong to the set of complex numbers. And I want to make this clear, x can still be, let's say, a real number 1. Why? Because when you have a real number, it's technically a complex number because 1 is the same as 1 plus 0, right? right? Hmm, it seems like... I don't even know if you have enough information or not, but anyway, as always, please pause the video and try this first. And we have this guy today. If I don't solve this, he's going to eat me, so that's no good, right? And if you guys know who this guy is, leave a comment down below let me know, right? Okay, let's get started. First, I will tell you, this question is from the book Put Name and Exam, which is an excellent book, right? And now, let's see how we can approach this. First thing first, x, y, z, they are complex numbers. And uh, because of this, we know that they are on the unit circle. And one of the things in the complex world is that when you have a complex number, you can talk about its complex conjugate. Especially with this information, its complex conjugate is actually pretty nice. So let me just write down some notes for you guys, right? So first of all, if I write x, again, it's a complex number, so I'll just write it in the standard form, namely a plus, a plus bi. a and b are real numbers, right? Well, let's take a look at its complex conjugate, which is, you can just put x with a bar on the top. This means a plus bi with the bar on the top. And all you have to do is change the sign to the opposite one, which is just a minus bi. That's the complex conjugate. Well, we have this information. Take a look right here though. When we have the absolute value of x, this represents the distance away from origin to the x. And the formula is you can just do the square root of a square and then b square inside. So that's all we have like that. And because we know this right here is equal to 1, so that's actually pretty nice, yeah? Okay, what else do we know, though? Hmm. Okay, okay, how about let's take a look of, again, I have a video recently that asked you guys, where do you like to put your complex number? Maybe it, you know, it's going to eat it for him, right? No good. So let's see, what if we put this on the bottom? Namely, if I do 1 over x, this right here is going to be, well, 1 over x. This right here is going to be 1 over a plus bi, right? But what I can do is just go ahead and do the conjugate, which is a minus bi, and then a minus bi, like so. And you will see, on the top, we just have a minus bi over, multiply out the bottom, we precisely get a squared plus b squared, like this. Well, do we know what this is? Yes, because this right here is just nicely equal to this thing squared, which is actually just equal to 1, isn't it? Right, 1 squared, still 1, great. And what's this on the top? Well, this right here on the top is precisely our conjugate which is just denoted by x bar, like that. So in another word, when we have its reciprocal, it's the same as its conjugate, which is pretty cool. Now, let's go back to the first equation and let's get to work. First, starting from x plus y plus z equals 1. What we can do first is just take the complex conjugate on both sides like this, and there's one property of the complex number, which is not so hard to prove, if you just write the complex number in the standard form and just work out the algebra. That says, when you take the conjugate of the sum, it's the sum of their conjugates. That means this right here is the same as saying, x bar plus y bar, and then plus z bar. And then the complex conjugate of 1 is just 1, so that's still equal to 1. Yeah? How about this? What's x bar. We don't like that. We know that's 1 over x. So we'll just write this as 1 over x. And similarly, this right here will be the same as 1 over y. And this right here will be the same as 1 over c. It's equal to 1. 
Again, because they all have absolute values being equal to 1, which is great. So now, we squeeze out another equation that we can use. Look at that. This, this, and that, which is so wonderful. All right. Right here, let's just go ahead and just do our usual fractions and all that stuff. Let me just multiply by here I need a yz, and then right here I need a yz, and then right here I need a xz, and then xz, and then right here I need a xy, and then right here I need a xy. So I will just combine the fractions on the left hand side, and we will get xyz on the bottom, and on the top is just yz plus xz, and then this right here is just plus xy, and this right here is equal to 1. Yeah. And what's xyz? It's equal to 1. Very nice. So have a look. This right here is equal to 1. In another word, we know yz plus xz plus xy is equal to 1. Very good. Now, I actually have some videos that are similar to this idea already, but this time, we actually have to go to the cube root. So, have a look right here. First thing, I will tell you guys to look at this as equation 1 and equation 2, and I will just call this to be equation 3. Notice that x, y, z, and then x, y, z, and then you have two of them, right? All that stuff. And uh, this is the sum, this is the product, and this is like both and all that stuff. So, have a look right here. So, note. When you have this kind of situation, you should kind of have the cubic equation in mind. And this is what I mean by the following, right? So I will just say, let R1, R2, R3 be solution to a cubic, to a cubic equation. Then based on this, what we can do is just x minus R1, x minus R2, x minus r3 and that's equal to zero yeah and then we can multiply this out real quick and we will so this right here we get x to the third power for the first term and then the next term is going to be well we have this times this which is minus and then if you just work that out it will be minus and uh, inside it will be r1 plus r2 plus r3 and that's very similar to the quadratic situation Yes, this is the Fiat's theorem, and I'm just pretty much going over the proof for that. x squared, and then next we will have to add, well, for this term, what you do is, you just have the product of any two of them. So you will have r1, r2, and then you add r1, r3, and you add r2, r3, like so, with the x term. Lastly, this, this, that, but you see they are all negative, so in fact it's a negative, and then the term is just R1, R2, R3 multiplying all together, and in the end you end up with 0. So, why did I bring that up? This, this, that, this, this, that, they have that flavor. So right here I can tell you, note, what's x, y, and z then? So note x, y, z are the solution to the cubic equation. Namely, we will just write it as x to the third power plus, sorry, x to the third power minus the sum of them, right, which is just 1. So we will just have minus 1 x squared. And then next we have to add all this, which is by 3, which is still equal to 1. And lastly, we have the product of them, which is just 1, but this is a minus, so we have a minus 1 right here. And that is equal to 0. So that's what x, y, z is. Oh, sorry, I used x already, I'm sorry. So I cannot use x right here anymore, and uh, I cannot use y. So let me just use uh, t, right, t. So still polynomial, doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, now we just have to solve this cubic equation, which is not so bad. This right here is easily factorable, and we'll just go through that. So we don't need this anymore. Let's see what we have. 
Well, right here, you'll see that this and that, we can just factor it. So let me just write this down again. t cubed minus t squared plus t minus 1 is equal to 0. Factor things up. This right here is just t squared. This right here is actually factorable t squared. And then we get t minus 1. And then this right here is just that, but we'll factor out plus 1. And then this is t minus 1, which is equal to 0. Factor this out, t minus 1 times t squared plus 1, like this. And that's equal to 0. And don't we have three solutions right here? Yes, we certainly do. And you can see that the first answer here is t is equal to 1. And then the second and third answer from here, t is equal to plus or minus i, like that. All right, so we have all these choices. T is equal to 1, and i and negative i. Well, earlier, I said x, y, z are the solutions to this cubic. And then we found the cubic solution right here. I just had to assign x to one of them, y to the other one. And yeah, <sighs> total we have six pairs, six uh, total solution, not pairs, six possible answers. So I'll just write this down right here for you guys, if you guys would like to see all the possibilities. So the first is 1i negative i. And technically, 1 is a complex number, right? So this is the first one. And the second one, I'll just keep the 1. And then I'll just swap this, which is negative i and positive i, like this. And then I will have the i goes first, and then 1 negative i. And then I will swap this too, so it's i negative i and then 1. And then, lastly, I will have the negative i go first, and then we have the 1 and then the i, and then we have negative i, and then i and 1, like that. Right? Whew! Very, very cool. Alright, so, that's it. Ah, uh, you like it? Oh, okay, he likes it, so he's not going to eat me, so that's good. <sighs> very cool stuff, yeah. And you can also say, x, y, z are just 1, i, and negative i up to permutation, which is just like this, but up to you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, hopefully it gets all like this, and as always, that's it.